everybody. I am back. Uh, I took a little bit of a break, kind of had life happen and was waiting on some parts and some other things like that. Uh, but I am back today and we are going to try to put the new rear master cylinder on. I got one off of eBay. I'm hoping that it works. I could not find any new stock for this master cylinder. So we're just going to try to do the best that we can and hopefully it'll work. It seems like a pretty straightforward procedure, except I'm not really sure about this rod that goes in the bottom. It's not threaded. I'm not sure what it does. Uh, hopefully we'll find out. So let's, uh, let's just jump right into it, shall we? Okay, so a few of the tools that we're gonna use. I have a metric set, a half inch drive, um, just because I don't know how tight those uh, bolts are gonna be. They look pretty rusted. I wanted the extra bit of uh, torque. Um, got these from Harbor Freight, pretty cheap. Uh, of course, half inch drive ratchet. Um, I got a composite one. Uh, so far it hasn't broke on me. So hey, we'll see. Once again, Harbor Freight, love my Harbor Freight. Um, and then lastly, I just have a pair of pliers just in case I need it to pop any springs or anything like that. I haven't really got into it. So uh, let's go ahead and look and see what we're gonna be doing here. Okay, so it looks like the first thing that we have to do is this bolt here, and this bolt here, both of these bolts have to come off. These are the two mounting bolts for the master cylinder. Once we get that off, there's a banjo bolt on the back. Probably see it here a little bit better. Banjo bolt on the back. So it looks as if both of these are 12 millimeter, I'm hoping, and we're going to uh, confirm here. Yep, 12 millimeter. So let's go ahead and break these loose. Yeah, that one wasn't too bad break this one loose too now. That one is a little bit stiffer. Broke right off. Now that's going to be a problem, isn't it? Oh, I don't know if I have an easy out or not, but it looks like from what I can tell it broke in the old, oh yeah, see, broke in the old casting of the carburetor. So that's actually, or not the carburetor, the master cylinder. So that's actually a good thing because we don't really care about this old one. And luckily enough, look at that. Both bolts are included. So we lucked out there. So let's go ahead, take this bolt the rest of the way out. And now the rod that I was talking about earlier goes in the bottom here, okay? I don't really know what it's for. I'm sure you guys be able to tell me uh, in the comments, um, but I'm hoping that it just kind of presses up against there because I can't really see it's not threaded down in there. So I think it just seats down in there. So we're going to go ahead, take this apart, and hopefully we can finagle it out of here. We might end up having to move some stuff around here though. Let's, let's check and see. So it looks like that rod just lifts out of that orifice, which is good. However, whew, we have some tight constraints here and I'm not exactly sure how we're gonna get this out. I don't really feel like taking off the back tire. We may have to end up taking, moving this ignition unit. Um, I don't know. Let's get into it a little bit more and see. Might be able to get it out that way too. Oh, well, we would, except for this rod being here. Okay, so let's just keep on trying to wiggle it in a way that's conducive to it getting out, right? So I'd like to get it out to a point to where I can get to that banjo bolt outside of the motorcycle, but I ne might not be able to. And even pulling it up all the way, that's as high up as it'll go currently. Um, it's not, 
It doesn't seem like it's up high enough. Let's see. Oh, you can, this little diaphragm pushes up a little bit. Okay, so now that rod's out of the way, which dropped this whole unit down. So that's good. So then if I can get it out, or at least get it to where I can get to that banjo bolt, I think that we might be in good business here. There we go. See that? Okay, so now it is out. You're probably wondering why I'm changing it if you haven't watched my last video. I don't even remember if I made a video about the rear one. Maybe I didn't. I thought I did though. Um, this cap is cracked somewhere on here and this bolt is actually broke off. So it would never get the, um, the vacuum that it needs when I was bleeding the brake. So let's go ahead and take this off. Let's hope that this is a 12 millimeter too, right? Could be. Hey, looky there, 12 millimeter. And if you hear any dogs barking like that, it's just mine. It's a nice day out. I wanted to leave them out. Oh, that's really on there. There we go. Anubis. I've got Doberman pinchers and they see squirrels or they see birds and they go crazy. Um, do I have to use the old banjo bolt? No, there's a new banjo bolt here. So if this will come out of the line clean, then great. If this don't, then well, let me back up a little bit more here so you can see a little bit more of the bike in its entirety here. Alrighty, crush washer, because I'm sure they didn't give me another one of these. These little things have been the bane of so many people's existences, whether it is cars or motorcycles, because they feel that, oh, we don't need this, it's just a thin washer. And then they wonder why their brakes will not uh, seal up correctly. And it's because of this, just this little crush washer that ends up making a seal. So it's very important. Do not lose these. In fact is on the new one, I don't, oh, yep. There is a crush washer on the new one. So that was actually pretty cool that they gave me a crush washer, but guess what? I'm keeping that one because you never know when you might need it, right? So let's see if we can thread this old bolt out. Yep. Old bolt came out, new bolts right here, new bolt, I'm going to, come on, I want to make, make sure that I don't lose that crush washer, so when I'm taking it off, there's a crush washer right there, okay, so the new one that's not rusted with the crush washer that's on it. Oh, you know what? There's another crush washer on here. There's two crush washers. Interesting. So there's like an upper and a lower, it looks like. I'll put on my old man glasses really quick just to take another look at this. So logic would dictate it goes through from the top here and around to the bottom. Then it threads in might be a little bit tricky. We want to make sure not to lose them crush washers. It should thread in. At, leave a little bit of slack in the line or in the bolt so that you can pop it up, twist it over. Oh, need a little bit more. Twist it over. There we go. And then lock it into its place. And I'll show you with the old one why. Um, in case you don't in case you don't know it is because see that notch right there here let's see see that notch right there hopefully you can see that notch that notch is what fits around the metal part of the line so the line actually fits into it it seats into it so we're gonna go ahead tighten this up now that it's in its spot
Now remember, this has crush washers on it. You don't have to crank the crap out of it because you're going to end up busting it. Because remember, this is all just cast aluminum here. And you do not want to break this stuff because it, it just, it's no bueno if you do. Okay, so there's this rod here. Uh, can you see it with my finger? Maybe if I flip it back here. See that rod there? So that rod fits in this diaphragm. This diaphragm, uh, let me show you on this one. This diaphragm collapses. Oops, this diaphragm collapses. See how it collapsed? It collapses. Um, this one is not collapsing. Hmm. This one may need a little bit of persuasion to collapse. Because right now, it's not collapsing. So we're going to get a small hammer and we're going to try to tap on it. So I've got a small hammer. As you can see, it's small. And I'm going to stick this up here on the peg and just try to tap it and see if I can't get it to drop. Looks like it's starting to collapse because I can see how that rubber is collapsing. There we go. My dogs are making weird noises. Then I could actually, you know, why don't I, I'm going to get some eight millimeter because that's what it looks like. looks like eight millimeter uh, bolts or a wrench so that I can take these off because then that'll limit the amount of space that I need to kind of finagle this all in and then I can put the cap on once it's all installed. Okay, so I have myself an eight millimeter wrench. And looks like it fits. These things aren't very tight. Um, but they were just tight enough to where I wasn't able to get them off by hand. So there we go. So now we're going to take off these two screws as well, or these two bolts, because remember, these are going to be these bolts mounting bolts so and i always like to put them when i lay them down i try to lay them in the right orientation just in case one's bigger than the other longer than the other or wider than the other doesn't look like that's the case but hey you never can tell so probably the hardest part is going to be to get this here in the diaphragm while i Kind of pull this stuff back here. Get this in like it needs to be. Oh, there we go. All right. And then it just kind of shifts back into place like that. That bolt is in there, or the diaphragm rod's in there. I'm not really sure what it's called, but I'm calling it a diaphragm rod. And then we are, once again, make sure when you're putting these in to be really careful. It's cast aluminum. Do not cross thread. Don't drop the bolt like I just did. They will go in. Sometimes you just have to, it's all about being patient. So there's one right there. I'm not going to tighten it really tight because I need to put the second one in right here. So I need to make sure that I pop this up in a way that it allows me to get the second one in in a way that isn't cross threaded or anything like that. There we go. Going to use our half inch drive. Come on now. And now I'm not going to torque this first one down because I want to tight. I want to 
snug this one up as well. Okay, so now, snug up a little bit, snug up a little bit, snug a little bit more, a little bit more. And I think that's gonna be good right there. So now, let's go ahead, let's put some fluid in here, pop the cap on, try to pump it up, start bleeding, and let's see what happens. So my brake fluid of choice that I'm using is um, AutoZone, no, I'm not endorsed, but just make sure it's DOT3. Seems like these Yamahas, these old Yamahas, uh, they really like the DOT3 fluid. Luckily, I had put some in the front. If you watched my, one of my previous videos, I was unsure on whether it took DOT3 or not. And it said right on the cover, DOT3 only. So here we go with DOT3. So we're gonna pour it in and try not to make too much of a mess. And it's nice to see the fluid being as clear as it is. So then we want to make sure that all there's no dust or anything on this little rubber seal diaphragm sort of thing and that it isn't popped or anything, which it doesn't look like it. She looks like it's in pretty darn good shape. And guess what it says on there? Use only dot three brake fluid. See, you can't go wrong when you listen to the directions, right? At least we, we hope so. So the top goes on. Be careful because the studs that are sticking out could end up puncturing this rubber diaphragm. There we go. So we've got two screws and a bolt. Boy, I hate the fact that they put the bolt there. That really makes it a little bit of a pain in the butt to put in, but we got it, right? We're going to go ahead and we're going to tighten the cap down. Once again, I'm not torquing any one of these single ones. I'm going to do about three or four turns on that one. Three or four turns on this one. And lastly, three or four turns on this one. Because you don't want to crank one on one side down, that will lead to a crack. So now that I did four there, I'm going to do four more on here. See if I can get it with my oh, I can still get it with my finger. Okay. These I can't, but this one, okay. So now let me tighten her down a little bit. Two. Three, four. Let's go back to here and crank this one a couple times. Two, this one a couple times. That one's kind of loose, so I can feel the lack of tension. All right, so that's pretty tight. So now the fun begins. I'm gonna take this brake pedal over here, pump the crap out of it, and slowly but surely try to bleed it and see if uh, we get any brake pressure. Eight millimeter. Now I am just going to release it real quick just to see. Okay, so this, I was like sometimes taking these out just to look at the condition of the back of them. This one doesn't look too bad. Clean off any of the funk that's on it. Make sure that that little hole, the little hole right there, make sure it's not plugged. And it's not, I can breathe through it. Now you can put compressed air through it and not stick your lips on something nasty like that, but yeah. This thing's been dried out for so long, all it is is me sticking my lips around some metal, you know. There's no fluid in there whatsoever. This diaphragm seems like it's not wanting to 
retract now. The one that I had to tap. It's not seeming like it's wanting to retract. So we're going to use this one just to see exactly. Okay. So there's a little metal piece in there. And there's a lip on that metal piece. So I might be able to get into there with a small screwdriver and pop it back down. I got a couple of flathead screwdrivers here. I'm gonna to try to be careful as to not to rip the rubber of the diaphragm, but I still want to be able to get in that slot and try to coax it down a little bit. Okay, so with PB Blaster and one hell of a big screwdriver, it seems as if that went ahead and did what it needs to do, but it's still hanging up. So we're going to keep on working it a little bit back and forth until it frees up, put a little bit of lube on it, and eventually it should start working again. down back up and just keep on working it again and again and eventually we should be good to go but not yet sometimes you can try to clean off the extra gunk too sometimes that makes a difference I'm actually going to use the straw, the PB Blaster, the blaster, whatever you want to call it. I don't even know if this is PB Blaster, just called Blaster. Kind of squirt it up in there. So you really want that lubricated well. Try it. Still sticks. So as long as I don't push it all the way down, it retracts like it's supposed to. So I'm just trying to work it. Sometimes just a little bit of vibration will help. Nope, still sticks. And I push it all the way. Ah, but it is getting a lot better. So probably what it was is there's probably chunks of rust sitting up in that thing. That's probably been sitting on a shelf for a long time and that's one of the hazards of buying old stock especially if you can't find new stock is that you have to try your best to uh, refurbish it yourself a lot of times because a lot of times what happens is there's bike salvage yards and they just strip the bikes and these parts sit on a shelf dry for years potentially until somebody wants it let's push it all the way up hey retracts perfectly now. So now we can actually try to start pumping it up. Um, I am gonna have to put that rubber piece back on when we're all done. But for right now, wiener, wiener, chicken dinner. So I pumped it up, I'm gonna do it 100 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 20, 30. 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and right around 100. Hold it all the way down. I heard some air. That is a great sign. Did you hear that air? We're going to tighten it back up, pump it some more. Okay, so after what seems like it probably was about a thousand pumps later, we're starting to get some nasty brake fluid out of the brake line. Um, you'll be able to see that. Oh yeah, you can see that hole or that thing right there. So we're gonna hold it, crack it. Oops, come on, get all the way on there. There we go. See that milky stuff? 
But that means the master cylinder is doing its job. It's pushing brake fluid through the system to the caliper, just pushing the piston closed. I don't see any um, I don't see any leaks. I don't see any bubbles. Those are all good signs. Oh yeah, we're getting we're getting a good strong pulse now. I'll do it one more time. There we go. Okay, everybody. So there you go. The a uh, little rubber piece is back on. I made sure to install it. It looks as if uh, we are holding some really good pressure now. So we have rear brake. That is awesome. Uh, yeah, it's been a couple of weeks, but we finally got back on Old Red. And Old Red now can actually stop. I feel more comfortable about trying to take it out on rides around the block without having to drag my feet and wear out my old soles, right? So let me talk to you a second about something I noticed from looking at the analytics that over half of the people that watch my videos are not subscribed. Please, I implore you to take a second just to click on that like, click on that subscribe, click on that notification bell so that I know that you like these videos and I will continue to make these videos, okay? If you saw anything that I was doing that you're like, hmm, something doesn't seem right, I would have did it like this or like that. Please put it down in the comments, okay? Uh, let me know if there's something on this bike or on any of my other bikes that you may want to check out or have me do a video on. Uh, if you want to know specifically, hey, how did you install a solenoid? Or hey, um, how did you install the carburetors? Or anything like that, please. Uh, I enjoy working on these bikes. I enjoy making these videos for you. I hope that you enjoy watching these. Stay tuned because I'm back now. And Big Red, gosh darn it, I want her back on the road uh, this summer. So we have our work cut out for us. I still have to source these tips. Uh, and I think that is the major stumbling block right now is the tips. And we got a little bit of going on with the handlebars, but that's gonna be for a future video. I enjoy the fact that all of you guys are watching and all of you guys are subscribing. It really, it really uh, makes me feel good to see that I have new subscribers and new watchers. So just remember, there'll be more content coming. I wouldn't be surprised if by the end of the weekend, have fun, drive safely, keep both those wheels on the ground.